When I first started looking into Cloudflare workers, I was really confused by them, but after playing with them for a while and creating some projects with them, they're actually really nice to use locally and to deploy. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the things that confuse me about Cloudflare workers and the other services that go along with them, like D1, R2, and KV. And I'm gonna simplify it for you and show you how you can get up and running with Cloudflare workers as well. So before we get started, if you have a look in the description below, you'll see a link to the repository that I'm working in right now. And this is a little starter pack that I've been working on to help you get up and running with Cloudflare workers with all my other favorite technologies as well. And I do plan to do a full walkthrough video of this stack and all the tech that I've used in it. So if you're not familiar with what Cloudflare workers are, basically they are serverless compute. Think Amazon Lambda, for example. And then there's other services that go along with it, such as databases, buckets, and key value storage. There's also queues and some AI stuff as well. So when you get started, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is to create this worker.toml file. You can do this in JSON as well. I prefer the toml file. So this is kind of like your infrastructure as code, but it's a little bit different. So for example, you can define a service here and it's not saying I want this service to be created for me. You have to actually go and create that with the command line or in the UI, but it's saying that I want a binding for this instance of this particular service. So in this case, we want a D1 database and we're going to call the binding DB. And this is one part that really confused me. So I'll explain what these bindings are. And then we're going to name the database and then we can provide a ID to an actual database that is running in Cloudflare. And D1 is a SQLite database. So it's not a Postgres or MySQL. Then we've got our R2 bucket. And again, we have a binding and then we have a key value namespace. And again, we have a binding. Down here, we have some dev properties. So I want this to run on port 8787 and I'm defining some variables as well. So these variables can be stored inside of Cloudflare when you deploy it and they can be secrets. But locally, I just use this .dev.vars and I have a little template here uh, for the variables that you need for this starter pack. Okay, so let's get into what a binding is. So here we have a D1 database binding and we've called it DB. If we have a look at this env.ts, this is just a type that I have defined. And I've defined here that we have DB. Now this DB here needs to match what is in this binding value here. So if we call this database, then we would need to call this binding here database. And you can see that we have our other bindings as well. We have our session cache and we have our bucket. So let's go have a look at our main.ts file. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, you will see that we are exporting a default object and this has one function and this is just an async fetch function that takes the request. And this is just a web request. And we also get this env and the env is of type env that we saw a couple of seconds ago. So on that env, now our db property magically appears every time we get a request to this worker. So in this case, I'm taking my env.db, I'm passing it into get db, and this is just going to return me a new instance of drizzle. And then I pass my db around with the request so I can query my database, insert data, fetch it, that sort of stuff. If we go into create auth, you can see that we're passing in db, we're also passing the whole env, so this is a little bit redundant. We don't really need to pass in db. But down here, we're using our session cache as a secondary storage on better auth. And this just has properties like get, put, delete, the same sort of stuff that you would expect from a key value storage. And then we can use our R2 bucket in the same way. So if we have a look at create app, this is just returning a new Alicia app because I'm running bun and Alicia works really well with bun. You can see that this upload file function takes out env. And then if we dive into that, you can see that we're using our bucket here to put an object. Okay, so that's the bindings. So this is a mono repo. So I have two Wrangler files, one inside of this worker folder here, and then one inside of this front end folder. So I can show you that one. 
And this is much simpler. It basically just says where we're building our pages to. And then I have one variable here as well, and that is the backend URL. Okay, so another thing that really confused me is what happens when I'm working with this database and this bucket and this key value storage locally? You can see here that my database ID is has a value of a database that doesn't actually exist, but this still works locally. And the reason for that is because, and this is one of my favorite parts about Cloudflare ecosystem, inside of the worker directory, if I zoom in so you can see it, we have this .wrangler folder. And inside of here, we have this state folder. And this is not committed to GitHub, by the way. This is just your local working files. We have D1. And now you can see in here, we have an SQLite file, and this is our D1 database. If we have a look in KV, you can see that we have our KV objects in here as well. And then same as R2, we have our blobs here. So an alternative to Cloudflare workers and that sort of ecosystem might be AWS. And if you wanted to use S3 locally with AWS, you would have to use some other package like MinIO or local stack, and same with emulating really any AWS service. Whereas with Cloudflare and Cloudflare workers, you could define this file here. You can run your main file here and everything just works. It's all type safe. And yeah, it, it has all of the services for you built into the code, which is really nice. So you've seen what the local setup is like what the local dev experience is like, but what is deployment like? Because deployment is a critical part of building applications. I've seen technologies that are really great locally, but they are impossible to deploy and therefore they are completely useless. So Cloudflare Workers is actually super simple to deploy and you really get two options to do it. So the first option is to use the dashboard and I've only ever done this. I haven't done it through the command line before. Well, I have just playing around, but I haven't deployed an actual application through the command line. I've only done it through this dashboard here. So you click create application, and this is inside workers and pages, by the way, which is under compute and AI. You can connect your GitHub and then you choose a repository that you want to deploy, click next, and then you get some advanced options here. So because I'm using a mono repo, I'm gonna set the path to worker, and then that's gonna pick up my build command as well because I, it knows there where the, it knows then where the uh, Wrangler file is. And you can set up an API token as well. And this API token can be used for the second method of deployment, which is with the command line. And then you can authenticate inside of a GitHub action with this API token here. You can also set some variables. You can encrypt those variables. So they are kept secret. And I'm not actually gonna deploy this, but I can show you one that I have deployed. So this is a worker that I've deployed earlier. And you can see here all of my bindings. I have a bucket and I have a database. If we click into that, it takes you to the bucket and there's nothing in that at the moment. And you can see the database here. You can see all of my tables. You get a console for the database, that sort of stuff. So the next way to deploy this would be inside of the Wrangler CLI. And I would highly recommend doing this inside of a GitHub action instead of deploying your local code or instead of running the command locally to deploy because you don't want to deploy what you have locally. You want to deploy what you have on your main branch. You could say when something's merged to main, then you run the GitHub action. And the real benefit to this is you can do it in a pipeline. So you can run your linting and you can run your tests before you deploy. And so you can block a deployment that has failing tests, for example. So if we have a look at some command line options here, this is all built into the same command line. So you get like, AV tools here, you get R2 tools, and D1, all sorts of stuff. You can also tail the logs and all sorts of stuff. So if we have a look at deploy, you can see you get some options here and you can deploy to a specific environment. So you could say, if you merge to a preview branch, then deploy to the preview environment. If you merge the main, deploy to production, for example. So that is a quick overview of Cloudflare Workers and some of the services that you can use inside of Cloudflare Workers as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below what you've used Cloudflare Workers for. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.